here what's up guys happy friday october 22nd 2021 uh big 10 game slate tonight for nba dfs uh, so whether you play on fanduel draft king yahoo or you just stick to prize picks uh, uh, there's gonna be plenty of action to go out there to get and plenty of players to dissect and uh put in your player pool or don't even consider uh you know how we do it kind of a two-step process this is going to be the first look video we're going to expeditiously take an abbreviated look at the slate uh kind of go game by game get uh uh, acquainted with the totals and some of the news to watch uh, spotlight a couple of players and then we'll come back later today 3 p.m eastern 2 p.m central and go live uh and uh really break down each game and hopefully come out with some uh really really good takes and a sharp player pull it has been a great uh start to the nba season pretty profitable so far just three days and the slates have been kind of wobbly. Small slate, big slate, small slate tonight. Another big slate. I do like the six to eight game slates. But, hey, we're all playing from the same deck of cards. And so far, uh, I've been uh, I've been going streaking. So hopefully we can keep the momentum going into a big Friday night slate video brought to you by RunDFS.com. If you guys want to get access to my personal projections, my player pools, and my spreadsheets, not just for NBA, but for NFL, baseball, go to RunDFS.com. Get yourself signed up and get into that uh, premium Discord 24-7 uh, sweat chat. I mean, I'm uh, when I meet, there's guys from not just America, all over the world uh, talking sports almost at any given time of day. Uh, so it's a beautiful thing to have. And then every day before lock, two hours before lock, I'm in the voice chat grinding down. Uh, until main slate lock so i uh, would welcome you guys to come be part of that uh, uh but most importantly come back today 3 p.m eastern 2 p.m central be part of the live stream be part of the chats it's a pretty interactive uh experience i try to get keep everyone involved so uh, i don't care how long you've been playing dfs or how long you've been watching basketball man we are a community so uh i appreciate you guys for just watching this video if you do me one solid hit that thumbs up uh, and double check if you're subscribed i have a personal goal of six thousand subscribers for the channel by the end of the year i only need about 600 less than 600 so i do think i'm uh that's obtainable matter of fact you know i might even surprise myself but uh it takes uh, you guys to make that happen so please 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 if you enjoy the content uh show me some love or hey hit subscribe and mute the channel whatever man um let's jump into the nba uh vip spreadsheet from rundfs.com like i said abbreviated look uh, game by game here i'm gonna try and spotlight a few players to kind of keep uh penciled down uh and uh, hopefully we can come back later and really really like them uh and go over uh, a couple of uh, bits of news to watch uh and then yeah if you guys see something that stands out here let me know it is uh the second game for pretty much all the teams here a couple teams might or uh yeah a yeah i think everyone on the slate has a, a second game um one of the things that we should be cognitive of is that the sites uh, uh you saw on opening night you know, there was a lot of rookies, some guys uh, uh, that recently got traded to teams that came in super soft price-wise and may have performed, performed uh, really, really well. Uh, and with a one-game sample size, the sites had to uh, correct the soft pricing, right? So there's going to be some cases of potential overcorrection uh, and... Uh, maybe some guys that were great plays on opening night are somewhat untouchable and, if nothing else, uh, uh, volatile at best because we don't really have a true sample size uh, to go off of. So kind of keep that in mind here today. Don't chase too many points uh, from opening night. If you saw last night, you know maybe some of those Warriors you liked on, uh, on the Lakers game didn't quite live up to the uh, night one performances, and that's just going to be the daily variance of NBA. Anyway, let's jump into the action. Charlotte Hornets at the Cavaliers. We got 225 and a half total, two and a half point spread in favor of the visiting Charlotte Hornets. Terry Rozier did not play on opening night. That created an opportunity for uh, elevated usage on LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward, and LaMelo Ball came out and did his thing. If we look at the NBA Wowie tool, he put in 28 minutes 
of that work, right? Almost two fantasy points per minute on FanDuel, over two fantasy points per minute on DraftKings. Uh, if Terry Rozier is out again today, he's carrying a questionable tag. Remember, this team has moved on from Devontae Graham, from Malik Monk. He's got a good shot to, at being a core value or a core cash game play for uh, the field and probably just a core play for me in general. 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DraftKings. You feel like his price uh, uh, may dip into the 9 to 9.5 Ks as we progress through the season. A true triple double threat. But uh, I feel a little bit better if Terry Rozier doesn't play. So we'll be watching that. I do like guards against the Cavs. On the Cavs side, Evan Mobley was a huge play on opening night. Uh, and perhaps one of those. Uh, overcorrection spots to watch we truly don't know uh but he's 6100 now on Fanduel, 6900 on DraftKings. it's kind of a price point where we're looking for you know high 30s to 40s definitely viable definitely possible it's what we saw on night one but uh if we keep keep playing these cavaliers games looking at their uh potential rotation um i don't know that i'm going to hold my breath on him uh, sustaining uh, a reasonable return on that price point to start with, right? I got to believe, looking at this lineup, there's going to be games where Markin and Pops, there's going to be games where Darius Garland and Colin Sexton pop. So I feel like that's a price point that I'm going to be a little bit cautious on and just an example of guys that maybe the site's overcorrected for, but may, maybe not. Maybe he's an AK player. So uh, we'll be playing with that. Another game on the dog here, Magic hosting the Knicks. Knicks coming off that exhausting game against the Celtics. we got a 213 total, seven-point spread in favor of the visiting Knicks. Julius Randle still at 8,500 on DraftKings. Uh, you know, he's on pace to lead the league in minutes, uh, and I think that is a Tom Thibodeau special, and I also think we might see that kind of trend um, continue for the entire Knicks uh, uh, lineup, but especially at least a core three, R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, and then in this scenario, we do have um, coming home Evan Fournier back in Orlando. Maybe he has a little bit of extra fun uh, after coming off a career high. Nothing really screaming at me other than that DK price for Julius Randle. The Magic side of things, I'm not running too much here. Mo Bamba, Wendell Carter Jr., you know, maybe they can uh, get you 30, uh, 30 plus at those price points. But on a 10 game slate, I don't see myself prioritizing uh, Magic players, at least from this far out. Also got the Pacers at the Wizards. Wizards put the stomping on the Toronto Raptors. Is that a situation where the Wizards got better as a team? They are fundamentally different, right? KCP in the mix, Dinwiddie, Kuzma, I, I, shoot. Uh, other than Bradley Bill, you could argue it's a whole different uh, a team. So maybe their their team philosophy and their uh, defensive talent got better. You could also argue that that Raptors lineup is just objectively not that talented. Maybe it's a little bit of both. The last couple of years, Wizards have been one of the worst defenses in all of basketball. So something to watch here. Pacers uh, on opening night all kind of performed collectively chris duarte ended up being one of the key pieces to winning big money on that slate and now we see the, pr the, the price going up uh to 5300 on fanduel 6k on DraftKings. is that an overcorrection i'm not gonna say yes i'm not gonna say no but i will say watch for the status of jeremy lamb and justin holiday and Tory Craig, if those guys are out, we might be able to feel a little bit stronger about the minutes for Duarte. And heck, if he puts up another 30 plus, at least on FanDuel at 5,300, I think that's a good uh, price to be at. If you think that the Wizards need to prove that they're a better defense now, um, Malcolm Brogdon at 7,500, you know, I have him at mid to high 30 minutes right now considering the questionables that we're dealing with and that's going to spit back 40 plus fantasy points every time and then demonts is a bonus i felt like at nine plus k uh I, I didn't know how much meat was left on the bone but we saw 50 plus fantasy points is still right there for the taking yes kyle kuzma got 15 rebounds on opening night but how often do I expect that to happen? And uh, Miles Turner, Sabonis could uh, probably benefit from uh, this matchup. So I may be right there on Sabonis. And then Miles Turner is under 6K on both sides. He's not a guy I'm going to play for a lot of real points, uh, but he's a sneaky stock guy. And sneaky is not even the right word. He'll go out there and get those blocks, uh, averaging over three blocks per game last year um, on Fandle. 
three or four or five blocks in a game for for him that'll give you a 15 point head start uh and then rebounds and uh points are a bonus and he's not to allergic to chucking threes so uh maybe that price point something i can uh keep in my back pocket for now on the wizard side bradley bill 94 92 you know he's gonna need 30 plus real points to, uh to probably satisfy that probably 40 plus real points uh, if we're being real I'm not really excited about that spencer did when he has hit you know 6k on fandle 5600 on DraftKings. he was a chalk value play on opening night um but i don't know how much meat is left on the bone at this price point and another price point that was uh corrected heavily montrez harrell he was under 4k on opening night on dk now he's 5700 to 5400 remember that game's a little bit lopsided so maybe the minutes are going to be misleading but we know he's a point per minute type of guy uh but it if we only get like a 25 to 28 minute projection and consider him a median point per minute player, I don't know that this price point is something I'm going to uh, be jamming him in on, but I did have a, a, a decent chunk on him on, on opening night. And that's what we're dealing with here. Trying to uh, adjust to the adjustments, right? Raptors at the Celtics. Uh, we got 219 total, six and a half points spread in favor of the Boston Celtics. Uh, evidently, Jalen Brown is just fine after dealing with the big Rona. Jason Tatum um, had a really rough go of it on opening night. Uh, took a lot of shots, just was not making them. Uh, luckily for him, you know, Jalen Brown was kind of compensating for it. They still walked away with the L, uh, but it is what it is. News to watch here. Josh Richardson was out opening night and Al Horford also out. And uh, Marcus Smart is questionable here so those are three q tags to watch uh if horford was uh to play i don't even know that it's a lock for him to start uh but it might eat into the minute rotation of the front court robert williams grant williams uh enos Cantor, stuff like that um maybe uh maybe it's nothing uh but i do like uh, the 6200 price point on robert williams uh, grant williams had a very serviceable fancy game in opening night that's not something i'm going to chase more often than not he's usually not that impactful for deep tournaments uh, uh and we don't expect uh overtime every game right raptor side of things i want to say no but uh with pascal siakam out uh, with Cal Lowry no longer on the team. You know, big minutes are there in competitive games for Fred Van Vliet, and he's 6,900 on DraftKings. Uh, that is a pretty low price point for the potential opportunity at uh, uh, the minutes he might get. I still uh, think of the Celtics as a decent defense when they're healthy, right? If Marcus Smart's in, Tatum, Brown, it's not a team I want to go out of my way to pick on, but maybe, maybe there's a discount at the potential minutes that he could play uh, at under 7K. 8,300 on a Fanduel, I'd be kind of walking the line there. Scotty Barnes uh, was a chalk value play on opening night. He's still kind of cheap, 4,500 on DK. So maybe you look for him to um, keep a decent chunk of ownership but like i said i don't usually roll out of bed to go crazy against the celtics in a 10 game slate uh i could probably justify going elsewhere but hey i've been wrong on the celtics before that knicks and celtics game was absolutely chaotic but uh, i definitely think that the knicks project better the celtics project much better than the raptors who just got washed uh by the wizards sixers hosting the nets kyrie irving still out for the brooklyn nets Ben Simmons out for the 76ers for the foreseeable future. Uh, but something that did come out yesterday was Joel Embiid was listed as questionable. Uh, and if he is unable to play here, it could create a really weird situation uh, where you could probably get away with full stacking the 76ers. Tyrese Maxey's under 6K on FanDuel, 5,300 on DraftKings. Joel Embiid would open up a ton of usage and they would have to compensate for those points. And then of course, uh, uh, this team without Ben Simmons and without Joel Embiid on the court would take a massive downward spiral in terms of defensive efficiency. So the Nets would be able to open up shop and you know, a sub 10K James Harden on DraftKings looks really good. And a sub 10K Kevin Durant on DraftKings looks really good. So it could be a handcuff stackable situation for them. You wonder if this game stays competitive uh, if Embiid is out 
but uh, uh, the 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 algorithm, right? If we if we don't project blowouts, would like a lot of potential value in this game. If Embiid was to be out here, Andre Drummond uh, had a massive fantasy game against the Pelicans. He's still under six K on both sites. A rebound machine, a point per minute machine. In this spot, if Embiid was out, you got him to 25, 30 plus minutes. I would be in on that. Uh, and then in order to keep this game close for scoring in a couple peripherals, I'd be looking to Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey, and maybe Seth Curry uh, has to pick up some of the scoring. I don't feel like I'm getting a massive bargain at his price point, but I wouldn't push back on you if you played him. Patty Mills is almost 5K on both sides. Uh, he was absolutely nuclear from behind the arc against the Bucks. Uh, maybe a little bit unsustainable to shoot as hot as he did, uh, but still, like we talked about, one of the guys that uh, is going to be leaned on by the Nets to be their sixth man, kind of run that second unit and also mesh well uh, when they roll out that small ball unit. So look out for that. Also keep an eye on Nick Claxton um, listening to uh, Nets beat writers and, and uh, Nets based shows like on the Yes Network. Uh, they don't expect Claxton to be the every game starter. That might be a fluid situation for Steve Nash uh, to approach per matchup. But, uh, you know, you got options like LaMarcus Aldridge, Blake Griffin, um, Paul Millsap. You got a front court that you can um, mix and match. But if Claxton is in the mix, the, even if he's not a starter, 3,800 on DraftKings, you can see some room for potential if he's going against not Joel Embiid. So I might keep that in my back pocket. I put him for 22 minutes and the algorithm spit back 25 DKP. So pretty valuable in terms of ROI. Uh, of course, in my center spot, bigger slates i look for the 50 plus fantasy point type of performances so i don't necessarily like to punt that position um uh, a lot uh but it's still uh something point that that we could justify so something to keep an eye on here so if you're taking notes joel Embiid injury status very important for this slate pelicans at the chicago bulls a 223 total the home team bulls favored by seven divide graham uh, 6K on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Josh Hart is carrying a questionable tag. Zion, Zion Williamson uh, going to be out still. Brandon Ingram uh, at 7,500 on DraftKings. And Jonas Valanciunas at 7,200 on DraftKings. Both guys that I could justify at their price point as kind of like uh, single-digit uh, owned uh, tournament darts, uh, but nothing I'm, I'm getting the warm and fuzzies on. The Chicago Bulls team seems like it's going to be pretty solid uh, overall defensively as well. Pretty solid home favorites here. Uh, and then on the Bulls side, um, I was uncomfortable on the opening night price points. Uh, felt like if they do play their median projections and they play as a balanced unit, uh, it would be a whole lot of hitting value maybe as you know the four and a half, five and a half X uh, spectrum uh, versus on their opening night prices. But it looks like now the prices are a little bit more justifiable for almost everyone, right? Uh, Lonzo Ball, 6,600. Zach Levine, AK, right? I'm looking for a north side of 40 at AK, 6,600. I can live with 35 plus. Uh, and then Vucevic under AK. We're starting to get to, to a point where I can justify each one of these guys uh, uh, at these price points. Even DeRozan, barely above 7K, I could justify. I'm He would probably be my fourth option, points per dollar. Uh, but you could sell me on Levine and Vucevic here for dueling 40 bombs, and I feel like I'm not breaking the bank there. So something I will be watching uh, for the Bulls here, and, and you know the Pelicans got absolutely mocked uh, uh, by the Sixers front court. Vucevic could have another first half double-double, and I got him for pretty aggressive minute projection right now, around 35. So I might be higher on the Bulls tonight than I was on opening night. Maybe they're like the new look Pacers, right? Last year, year before, I thought the Pacers were a stackable team. Maybe the Bulls kind of get to that point. Uh, but it really feels like Levine and Vucevic might be guys I'm going uh, to be able to warm up to. Oklahoma City Thunder at the Houston Rockets, 223 total, two point spread affair with the home team Rockets after they let the Minnesota Timberwolves look really, really good. Uh, two teams that really don't have their stuff figured out. One team in position to do so, tons of draft capital. The Rockets 
Not so much still in transition. What we do know about the Rockets is that Christian Wood per minute can be a problem. 7,100 in DraftKings. Kind of been interesting. Don't know how confidently I get to any of these Rockets players, uh, but we will be watching the status of Daniel House. Maybe that'll open up some more wing minutes in the middle there. Nothing I'm going to write home about, but I will say on the Thunder side, Shea Gilgus Alexander, under 7K, 6,700. I could take some of that uh, against this Rockets defense uh, if he gets 30 plus minutes, absolutely a price point that he could uh, pay off in uh, uh, in a satisfactory way. I got him for 40 plus fantasy points on both sides. So I'll take that all day long, all day strong. He might be my way to not get too crazy with Fred Van Vliet. You know what I'm saying? Um, Isaiah Roby, uh, all these supplementary plays. Yeah, Lou Dort, Josh Giddy's Giddy's a little bit intriguing. 4,100 on DraftKings, still a path to value. Uh, San Antonio Spurs at the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, uh, Nikola Jokic, 10.2K on DraftKings. I got him for 50-plus fantasy points on both sides. As long as Jamal Murray is out, even when Jamal Murray's in, I'm going to be a heavy investor in Nikola Jokic. He's absolutely the backbone of this team with incredible fantasy upside. So, yeah, you can give me some Jokic against the San Antonio Spurs. Michael Porter Jr., 6-300. I probably have a little bit of that in tournaments. Same with Will Barton, uh, but nothing I would be overly confident overly aggressive with on the spurs side Jakob purtle is a guy that can be a point per minute kind of like uh rashawn holmes will talk about point per minute in and of themselves but is the matchup and is there a ceiling at this price point that uh is worth me really sacrificing uh some of the high-end guys like yoke it's probably not uh deontay murray is intriguing maybe uh, correlate some uh, Murray lineups with Jokic. Uh, but for the most part, this is just kind of a uh, Jokic and get out uh, uh, when it comes to aggressive ownership. Suns at the Lakers, 223 total here. One point spread in front of the home team Lakers. Kind of a yuck spot. You might be looking for Russell Westbrook to bounce back. 8,600 needs 40 plus. Uh, is this going to be one of those scenarios with a big three that you hardly ever see? All three coexist. You hardly see two have ceiling games. Uh, opening night, LeBron James and Anthony Davis were able to do just that. It is very weird to see AD under 9K uh, on DraftKings. Uh, almost a, th a $1,300 discrepancy between his Fanduel price and his DK price. So maybe if we lower our expectations and really our requirements at that price point, maybe we can warm up to playing them. We do respect the Suns as a team defense. Uh, Aiton, Crowder, McCall Bridges. Uh, I I'm not excited to, to get to the Lakers here, uh, but I would say that individually there is meat on the bone at 8900 for anthony davis that's just an incredible price point and you know when lebron and ad are on they, they can be uh, matchup proof and then i don't expect russell westbrook to be that bad every night and i still think there's some room at 8600 right you're gonna see a lot of buy low sell high opportunities especially when it comes to field ownership maybe it's not this spot because i do got respect for the sun's team defense but if we keep seeing bad Westbrook games and it gets cheaper and cheaper, you already know I'm going to be a sucker for it. Jazz at the Sacramento Kings. Last game on the docket. Uh, another game where I'm not too stoked uh, pre-flop, but when you really look at the prices and you consider it's the Kings, I might sell myself on a couple more plays uh, than I expected to roll out of uh, bed. 225.5 total, 5.5 points spread in favor of the visiting Utah Jazz, uh, Rudy Gobert at 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DraftKings. Usually a walking double double, even if it's a low point double double, is still there. And he can get some blocks. Average almost three blocks for games last year, where the Sacramento Kings uh, do have some. Uh, size problems in their front court, even more no, more so now uh, as uh, Marvin Bagley doesn't appear to be part of their short-term uh, future and long-term future. Rashawn Holmes, undersized versus Gobert. Harrison Barnes, night of his life uh, against the uh, Blazers on opening night. There is some block potential in this lineup, but you know Darren Fox will drive to the rack. So I could be... Uh, more interested, more interested in this game uh, than you might uh, expect me to be. Utah Jazz will chuck threes. A lot of people forget uh, how how uh, aggressive they are from behind the arc. And the Sacramento Kings, as bad as they are defensively, they'll try and pick up the slack offensively. And there's some meat on the bone at 8,500 on De'Aaron Fox's Fanduel price point, 8,400 on DraftKings. 
I don't think we're going to get to 7K Harrison Barnes, right? A super career night shooting the other night. He had, what, like eight threes? Yeah, no thank you. Rashawn Holmes at 6,400. He's long been a point-per-minute type of uh, play. So if you can get to that 30-minute threshold, not out of the question for him to pay off that price point on the nose and even offer some ceiling. That is possible. But Rudy Gobert not being somebody we like to target. Perennial Defensive Player of the Year. So that's more of a, a, a long shot tournament play. Um, did his thing against Nurkic, right? Anyway, that's our first look at today's slate. Remember, 3 p.m. Eastern today, 2 p.m. Central. We're going to be live uh, spinning through it. Hopefully, we won't have too much crazy news throughout the day. We'll be able to adjust accordingly, bring your thoughts, bring your questions, your comments, uh, and uh, we'll have some fun as we go in to the weekend, man. I appreciate you guys making a little bit of my time be a little bit of your time. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe. I love you. Good luck. God bless. And go win some money.